Hi, this is Mike DiCecco. The Columbia name is one of the oldest in phonograph history. In 1904, Columbia had set up a Canadian factory in Toronto at 73 to 85 Adelaide Street West, and this enabled the manufacture and distribution of machines and records. Since at the turn of the 20th century, Canada only had a population of about 5 million, artists usually had to go to other countries, often the United States and England, to record. Therefore, the majority of records pressed in Canada were from foreign matrices. All early disc recordings were pressed only on one side. It was thought by the record executives of the time that a person would go into a store to purchase a specific song and would not be interested in an additional recording on the reverse side. It is interesting to note that a Canadian by the name of Colin McKenzie of Whitehorse, Yukon, filed a patent for a two-sided record in June 1904. However, the industry in North America was not yet ready to accept such a radical change. A German company, Odeon, first manufactured double-sided records in 1904. However, Victor held the patents in the United States, but continued to produce only single-sided discs. Victor's main rival, Columbia, circumvented the patent and began to issue what they called double-disc records in 1908. Victor immediately commenced legal action, which dragged on for some time. It was finally settled when a Columbia lawyer held up a record and said, if we are only allowed to record on one side of the record, which side are we supposed to use? Victor eventually lost the lawsuit and Columbia proceeded to promote their two-sided record, which eventually became the standard format. Around 1910, Columbia created a special advertising record that was sold to U.S. and Canadian customers at a very discounted price. The standard U.S. price of Columbia Records at the time was $0.65, cents, compared to $0.85 cents in Canada. However, for advertising purposes, the special record was sold for only $0.25 cents in the U.S. or $0.30 cents in Canada. Side 1 consisted of a song by Canadian tenor Henry Burr, which was supposed to show off the superior quality of the art of recording at the time. However, it is the flip side of the record, the advertising side, that we'll be playing for you today. The U.S. pressing of this record is relatively more common. However, the Canadian version is quite rare. Let's look at some of the differences of the two. The Canadian recording on side one by Henry Burr is actually a different take. Side two is clearly a different recording with an introduction that makes bold reference to the fact that the record is made in Canada by Canadian workmen. The Canadian labels are slightly different for both sides of the record. Side one is showing a large 30 cent price. Side two shows a higher Canadian catalog prices of 85 cents, as well as the fact that the plant is located in Toronto. Note also that the list of songs on side two has some very Canadian recordings, O Canada and A Song of Canada. These are added above the same song titles that were used in the U.S. promotion. The Canadian pressing must have been made in relatively short supply, as there is another version that was later sold in Canada. This was actually the U.S. pressing with the price of 25 cents crossed out in red ink and 30 cents added in. The flip side is also used a U.S. label and inserted a comment that prices were higher in Canada, referred to the catalog. Let's now listen to this unique Canadian advertising record. I've used the Vinyl Studio program to reduce surface noise and improve the overall sound. I hope you'll be somewhat impressed by the clarity of this recording from over 110 years ago and was used to demonstrate the state of the art in recorded sound at the time. This Columbia double disc record was manufactured in the Canadian Columbia factory by Canadian workmen. Its purpose is to demonstrate to you the superiority of Columbia records and to show that they can be played on Berliner or Victor talking machines as well as Columbia Graffinolas. The patented process of Columbia recordings ensures remarkable durability and wear and the naturalness of tone is reflected as in a mirror. Judge for yourself in home sweet home by the Columbia Orchestra, commencing with the violin and successively taken up by the other instruments. Listen carefully and see if you can distinguish where each instrument comes in. They enter in the following order. First violin, second violin, viola, cello, flute, bass, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, French horn, bell, Cornets and trombones.
Standard price of Columbia double disc records in Canada is 85 cents. Any Columbia dealer will gladly play you any Columbia record and furnish you with a complete and instructive catalog of Columbia double disc recordings.